Hey, welcome back to the garage, everyone. Today, we're making some much needed changes to the old Quadrajet, so stick around. <laughs> going to continue on with our carburetor project here so up next we're going to install the primary throttle shaft bushings now so I ordered a kit from uh, Cliff's High Performance some of you guys are probably familiar with Cliff Ruggles he is a uh, pretty uh, pretty well known in the carburetor world especially the quadrajets and this is what you get with the kit you get uh, four brass bushings and throttle plate screws. You get a bolt and a nut. Hey, how about that? That's, that's to uh, drive the bushing into place. You get a specialized bit to drill out your, your uh, lower uh, carburetor plate. Now, this bit has been machined. Okay, and the way this thing works, see how, see how it's been machined very slightly right there? This bit right here will slip up into the throttle shaft hole, right? And when it gets to that point right there, that part right there will do the cutting. And this thing will cut up through there like that. And then you remove it, and you drive in the shim on this side. And you'll do the same thing over here, and drive in a shim over here. If you need a stop, you can put this on the bit to limit your depth if you need to. Uh, lastly, you get a pack of uh, Loctite, and that is to put on the bushings and on the throttle plate screws when you reinstall them. All right, following along in the uh, instructions here that you get from Cliff, uh, they're fairly lengthy. These screws from the factory have been staked. They've tapped into the end there to uh, keep the uh, screws from backing out. So what we need to do is grind that off before we try to screw these out of the uh, throttle shaft. We're going to go ahead and remove our primary throttle plates and you need to mark these uh, left and right. I've already marked them with a pencil. All right, there's your left hand throttle plate. And the right hand, let's go ahead and disconnect the choke uh, spring here. All right, we got that loosened up. There we go. That was fairly tight, but it wasn't too bad. All right, so we, that's what holds that on. Now we'll get that in our little baggie over here. And uh, there we go. This is the uh, this is the fast idle stop. So in the morning when you crank up, this screw on the passenger side will control your idle speed on uh, full choke. For some reason I was thinking you could take the primary throttle shaft out without having to remove the secondaries, but I don't see a way around it really. So we're going to take the secondaries out too. Let's go ahead and mark them. All right, we've got our uh, throttle shafts removed from the uh, from the base plate here. 
we're going to be boring out the primary throttle shaft holes. We're going to leave the secondaries alone. They just don't get used as much, right? So, you know, 90% of the time, the wear uh, isn't in, is in here. These were flopping around a little bit. These were pretty tight, so I'm not going to mess with these on the uh, secondary side. And we got all new screws in the kit, so these screws I just pulled out, we'll toss those. All right, here we are over here at the uh, bench vise. We're getting ready to drill out the primary throttle shaft bore, which is right here. That's on the driver's side of the car. We're going to use the kit from uh, Cliff's High Performance. Uh, you're probably seeing some other places on the internet. Uh, a lot of guys are using a reamer of a very specific uh, size to do this job. That's fine, too. They do carburetors all the time. I don't. This is a kit for the home hobbyist, and it works fine. I've used it once before, mm, about 10 years ago, because I redid the carburetor on my old Corvette. So, now, let's go ahead and get started. We'll drill out our throttle shaft bore, and we'll get ready to put this bushing in, and we'll pound it into place with just a simple bolt and a nut. The reason that there is no need to use a drill press is that this this part of the bit will keep you inside the bore and it will make you go nice and straight. Let's go easy, slip it down through there. There we go. All right, and I've got this stop set to the depth of one of these bushings. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and drive in our bushing. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Let's do the other side. All right, we're going to do the uh, passenger side now. Alright, we're getting ready to finally put some epoxy on our well plugs on the bottom side of the main body of our quadrajet. We're going to use JB Weld Water Weld and it indicates here that it is for fuel tanks, marine and boats, resistant to water, oil, gas, diesel, so on and so forth. So that's what we're going to use. These are the two main ones here that we're going to cover up. Uh, we're going to cover up these two right here, and you know what? I found a couple of more. I'm not sure if they're problematic areas or not, but hey, why not seal them up while we're at it? So there's one right there. Uh, there appears to be one right there. And there's a big honking one right there on the uh, fuel inlet, so we're going to seal all those up. I don't know if that's necessary or not, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, first thing though, we're going to rough up the surface with a little sandpaper all around here and give our uh, epoxy a nice rough area to stick to. So up next, we're going to be putting some epoxy on this uh, carburetor and then we're going to let it dry for however long is required. I'm not sure how long that is. Uh, we'll give it 24 hours at least. All right, here we go. probably do this with a Dremel tool but to be honest I think I'm out of those little brushes for my Dremel tool so I'm gonna do it like this You gotta peel back the little plastic thing here. And we're gonna get just a uh, we're gonna get just a dab for starters. Now you're supposed to use your fingers to uh, mix this stuff up, so I reckon that's what we're gonna do.
be honest with you, I don't really like using my fingers to mess with this stuff. I think I'd rather have a spatula or a um, putty knife. I think a putty knife would work a lot better for this. All right, I'm not going to get too crazy with this. I'm going to see. I'm going to start off by uh, working, trying to work this into the little crevices and cracks. You know, like pressing it in, like you're trying to fill a nail hole. Because after all, we are working with putty, right? All right, well, there you go. It's stuff is a little different to work with if you're used to a standard JB Weld. As long as you can remember your good old days of uh, your youth and working with Play-Doh and modeling clay and other things like that, uh, you'll be fine. So I've got the uh, water weld over the problematic areas plus a couple of, of extra ones as well. And... Um, this one will be visible from the outside, so I tried to make it a little prettier. Uh, I may dab a little grape. I don't know what color this will be when it dries. Probably white, but uh, I may dab a little gray paint on there or something to cover that up. Ah, well, it doesn't really matter. The air breather will cover up all this mess anyway. Who, who's going to care, right? All right, so this is going to dry for however long it says on the directions. Uh, I don't know. I got to wait on carburetor parts anyway, so it's going to dry for probably a couple of days couple of days before I do anything else with it so it will be ready to reassemble when we're done but I tell you what one thing that just showed up I bet you weren't counting on an unboxing in this video were you all right let's get busy we've got our order in from quadrajetparts.com let's see what we have man I threw it across the room and didn't even know it. There we go. Accelerator pump, baby. Let's see. This is the overall length of 2.65. I measured the one I already had, and that's why I chose the 2.65. So let's get this unpacked and see if I was correct. Where's my old one? By golly, I think we uh, found the right one. All right, so here is the old accelerator pump. And you know, it, we could probably have reused this, but I was like, you know what? As soon as I put this thing together, it's liable to crack and come apart. So i decided to go ahead and, and get a new one so here's the new style okay the springs a little different uh the rubber this is probably uh a, some sort of a more much more modern material instead of just rubber and uh, you have this uh, circular spring in there in here I, there's a special uh, word for these for these springs i can't recall what it is off the top of my head it's a little bit stiffer too a little lighter and this one's a little stiffer but the length is right so I show you the difference see the uh, with the old pump it slips down in there it just it just kind of falls right down in there doesn't really do a whole lot it sure as hell ain't gonna do a lot of pumping so for the new one and this is the right size it's got it's got a nice little tight little fit so when you install it, you got to put just a little dab of grease on there, not you know just enough to make it slide down in there. Another thing you want to check is make sure your bore inside your pump housing is nice and smooth, which ours is, so we shouldn't have a problem with that. 
Another thing I have on order, it should be arriving in a few days, power piston retainer for the top of the power piston and also a power piston spring. I ordered a set of springs and I'll choose the one which is most closely resembles the stock spring. Okay folks, I think I'm gonna call this a video. We've completed the primary throttle shaft bushing installation and we've sealed up the casting plugs on the main body of our uh, quadrajet here. Right now though, I'm waiting on parts. They'll be in on Monday. So I've got a couple of days to plan before then. So I'm kind of at a standstill. I can't put this carburetor back together until I get all my parts. So we're gonna call this a video and wrap this thing up. Hey, listen, I appreciate you guys stopping by my channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to click that little bell down below. Hey, we're going to talk to you guys real soon. We're going to be putting this carburetor back together. We're going to get the intake manifold cleaned up. And we're going to get this thing cranked. And I think it's going to run better than ever before. So we'll talk to you soon.